Devontae, that's the, now. That's the ones you do have. Now, and when all I. All of say you're not toxic, they're lying. Now, when I asked you to be on this podcast, I did not expect you to speak any kind of way. I came with the bullshit. You absolutely. I'm a blame do say. I think it's the do say. It's absolutely the do say. Thank you for tuning in to sip on this with a Paris. Got to get lit with these topics. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for the love and good time. Forget to like, comment, subscribe. Without further ado, I bring to you this for you to sip on to. All right, what's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Sip on This. Uh, so first off, disclaimer, if you hear a lot of noise in the background in tonight's episode, uh, there's not much I can honestly do about it. My dog has been sick and he's on 10 this week, but anyway, uh, moving forward, you see, got a special guest here tonight. You want to introduce yourself? Devontae, what's going on everybody? Cousin Devontae, if you haven't caught on by now, everyone's basically family at this point. Dang. So I'm not going to keep introducing, oh, this is cousin so-and-so, this is cousin so-and-so. No, everyone's related. So uh, I thought about tonight's topic due to something that I kind of saw on social media. I, honestly, it wasn't necessarily the post itself that made me think of this topic. It was the conversations in the infamous comment section on the shade room and basically you know it spawns from basically you know a lot of women love to talk about how guys ain't shit yes, so uh they like to talk about and then like in the process of saying how guys aren't shit nowadays they like to say what qualities in a man that are lacking in most men right. so i thought in tonight's episode it'll be cool to have from a guy's point of view certain characteristics that we feel like we should embed in ourselves and you know be able to pour into our relationships not just romantic relationships but you know family friends etc and also with that being said speak of some of the pressures that men specifically black men black like men. us um, deal with on a day to day basis. Yes, so um, to kick things off, what, you know, what are your what are your thoughts on this uh, men ain't shit thing that women love to come in our nets about? Yeah, this would be a series. Um, uh, listen, <laughs> but listen, um, as far as talking about men ain't shit, a lot of times women do have valid points. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, facts. You know, niggas sometimes we a lot of time men not shit. Um, but a lot of times also, like you said about the pressures that can play a big part into why men might not be sure of how they, why they move the way that they do move. Mm -hmm. And that's not talked about. It's just usually seen on the surface level. Right. And then, oh, he did this. He ain't shit. Mm -hmm. That's just a narrative. And then mm -hmm. that's what gets clicks and that's what gets people's ears. So yeah. people will just, you know, run with that. Um, mm -hmm. but I like, I think in the social media area a lot social media era a lot more is portrayed yeah. and people are able to see more like even if the headline is oh this person did this this male did this mm -hmm. and then they see the video or the backstory it's like oh yeah. there's more to it so yeah yeah it's definitely deeper than the surface yeah something that yet again for yet another episode that i think you kind of touched on in a way is uh basically um you know, trauma mm -hmm. to an extent. What I mean by that specifically is I feel like a lot of these men may not possess certain characteristics most women look for yeah. because of where it started at in the way they were raised at home, right? Uh, a lot of men, of course, don't grow up with fathers. So they don't have that necessary father figure in their life showing them how to necessarily treat a woman. Right. Um, and but honestly, not gonna lie, there's men out there that have that father figure that for whatever reason still don't know how to treat women right. But uh I feel like also huh, how do I how do I put this into words? Um I feel like also though, I feel like when men do know how to treat a woman a lot of women actually don't know how to receive it and i think that's a conversation that, that right. i don't know they're willing to have either though oh, yeah that's a different conversation <laughs> it's like you asked for it but then you it's given to you right here yeah you go and it's like why well, didn't want it like that yeah like, like, oh trigger easy. trigger yeah. it's like you said that like perfect yeah. like okay i'm doing x y and z you give it to him and it's like 
but I wanted this package with a bow on it. Yeah. Where's the bow? Yeah, exactly. You're not it's presenting this the way. Clean. Listen. It's a little too clean. And I feel like, speaking for myself, I've been in relationships where it's like, because I know I'm a good dude. I'm not, I don't like drama. So I'm not about to be out here doing all this fuck boy type stuff <laughs> yeah. that a lot of guys are known for or whatever. And so I feel like the women that I've dealt with in my past, when they come across someone like me, they're like, nah, you're doing something. You can't be trusted. Yeah. And again, I feel like that's because of the trauma that they've dealt with in past relationships. Mm-hmm. I feel like essentially what I'm getting at is I feel like a lot of women, you know what? I'm not even going to say women. I feel like our generation in general is known for being in bad situations and bad relationships. And instead of taking the time between this relationship and the nets, they're just going from one traumatic situation, yeah. taking all that hurt, all that anger, mm-hmm. that this person calls and taking it to the next relationship and not giving that next person a fair shot, For sure. you know, to start from a good foundation. Yeah, exactly. It's like they see, they, like you said, they bring from a situation or relationship to the next. Uh-huh. And while it's a new face, they're bringing the same characteristic from the past relationship. Yo. It's almost like they're dating the same person again. Yo. <laughs> it's like they're dating the same person again. Yeah. And this person's over here like, then that affects the new person because... That man, male or female, might be like, well, dang, what did I do? Is it me? What yeah. am I doing? The whole time, yeah. this person is still mad from the past situation shit when they might have cheated or lied or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So they get to a new situation and like, oh, babe, oh, what are you doing tonight? And the guy might be like, yeah, I'm just going out with a couple of guys and mm-hmm. something to eat. And she triggered. Yeah. She might have heard that before. So yeah. Like, oh, nah. He going to the strip club. Or he, going, <laughs> he going to the club or something. And he really could just be going with the guy. Yeah. I feel like, too... With a lot of situations like that, it could be, like you said, innocent. I feel like at the time, you know, sorry, ladies, I just feel like from my personal experiences, this is what I feel like. And I feel like women, when you first tell them that, essentially, they may honestly be okay with the thought of that. Right. And then the moment comes, they see you getting dressed. They see you with the fresh cut. You you know, you looking and feeling good or whatever. And they just like. Oh, he think he about to be looking good for another bitch. Okay, yeah. he he thought oh, yeah, yeah. I got I got some for him. Oh, you put cologne on too. Oh, you oh, looking and smelling good. Oh, you thought, you thought you yeah. thought you brushed your teeth today. <laughs> oh, for another two minutes. Oh, like, oh, got you. Let me get an attitude. Yo, and action. <laughs> I just think it's funny how the infamous. I just think it's funny how we go out. You don't do all of that. Yo, you put a sweat. You put a Nike Tech suit on. The yo, door. yo. Like who's going to get tacos? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is always going to be something, man. Always. Like you said, that's another thing where it could be nothing, and then it turns into something. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> Again, the puppy. <laughs> but as you were saying. But yeah, like I'm not gonna start an argument or you know partake in an argument when I know it can be avoided. Mm-hmm. It's not a serious matter, something that we're going to forget about in a couple of days. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to argue with you about it. You got yeah. it. It's okay. And then, you know, we just, I'll just move on about it, you know? Yeah. Uh, to piggyback off of where you're coming from, I don't like arguing either, especially with women. Because I feel like it's one thing arguing with a guy, and then if the right thing sets you off with a guy, you can take it to the next level if necessary. Whereas with a woman, I mean, you guys know your words cut. You guys know the trigger points, and you'll take it there anyway. (laughs) And it's just like for us, I feel like what else is something else that I want to bring up too is I feel like oftentimes um, women kind of forget that men are human we have feelings and emotions as well. So it's like they think that, yeah, granted, when we do something to trigger you guys and like we deserve certain reactions that we ask for. Right. But I feel like at the end of the day, I feel like especially in our generation, I just feel like there tends to be a lack of mutual respect, you know, coming from both ends, because it's like you throw a dagger most of the time the person that you came for is going to come back for you twice as hard. Yeah. And it's it's just a never-ending battle at that point. It, it literally turns into a war to a point of no return. And that's where I think something else that I feel like a lot of people kind of want to shy away from is the fact that um, this may have been common like back in the days too, but I feel like growing up, especially like from high school through college, you used to hear about couples physically fighting all the time and sadly it came across as if that was normal Mm -hmm. 
normalize it. Yeah. And it's just like, since when is a man putting his hands on a woman or a woman thinking it's okay to put her hands on a man just because a man can't, you know, physically harm you or whatever? Why is either one okay? And I think, like, to go further with that, like you said earlier, trauma. Listen. Coming up, depending on how you might have been raised or what you might have been... Uh, or what you might have seen coming up, you may think that's what love is, or that's our relationship. Listen, yeah. They don't. I remember speaking to one girl one time, um, and she literally said, "If if we doesn't, if we don't fight, that shows me he doesn't love me." Basically, going off of what you said, some people really look at that kind of as like a turn on, yeah. Because it's like, oh, mm-hmm. like you're aggressive, aggressive. Exactly. I kind of like that. Exactly. And again, the fact that people find that to be a way to show love is unfortunate yeah and there's no way especially if you're not someone used to that you don't know what to do in situations like that but like you said like to go off of that um as far as you said about pressures of being a black man i feel like you have to be as a black man um you have to be strong but yet vulnerable but not soft like you have to be strong and like you know, make your lady, she's with you, feel safe. Yeah. But, and you have to be vulnerable, whereas, you know, be emotionally available and be able to talk and understand where she's coming from. Mm. But at the same time, it's a thin line because if you come off as soft, there's no, depending on what, like, she might not come back from that. Like, oh, he's mm. soft, or I'm going to walk over him. Yeah. So it's like, and you know, that can be a struggle because you may just, like, be just a nice person, like, nice and yeah. easy going. There's nothing wrong with that. But like I said, like I said, it's somebody for everybody. Mm-hmm. If you really like somebody, you might end up like trying to take on this personality. Yeah, it's not you. Yeah, you can get beat up behind. Like, <laughs> listen, listen. So yeah, man, I, I think that's like a pressure because I know, uh, you know, it's a, like I said, trying to find that balance of who you really are. Yeah, and trying to be tough because there was a way where like you know everybody wanted to be macho and aggressive. Yeah, that's, that's not you. It's gonna show. Yeah, and then women can see it too. Yeah. Um, but as far as I think men take it on because it's their pressure. Yeah. And you want to be like seen as masculine. You know yeah. Something that you spoke on too that low-key triggered me is so something that I'm not going to call it my own personal trauma, but something that I know about myself that's a negative to something that I br- intend to bring in all relationships. I didn't realize until I got older how kind of emotionless I can be mm-hmm. and like basically being like insensitive Oh yeah, and uh, insensitive also can kind of be like unempathetic about a lot of stuff too. Nonchalant. And yeah, nonchalant. like nonchalant is something that a lot of people that I dealt with and deal with, like, especially from family, that's something that a lot of people would, a term that people would use to like describe me. And it's not that I tell them, it's not that I'm nonchalant. It's just, I'm so easy going. It takes a lot to seriously get me bothered. Yeah. And it's like something that will set you off and get you to a 10 in five seconds. It's not going to get me to a 10 in five seconds. Yeah. I like, I'd rather live life and just like seek out happiness as much as possible and keep my energy in more like positive, you know, situations or whatever. And I don't like to dwell on negativity whatsoever. So it's like if it comes off as nonchalant, that's not the intention. But, you know, that's why I have to explain behind them. But also dealing with like the insensitive and like the emotionless part, I feel like again, that had to deal with my upbringing just because like my mom's side of the family, um, they're more so stern. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the love is there, but we're not the lovey dovey, like kissing and hugging. That's love you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's understood. What's understood doesn't need to be said, you know, but that doesn't help when you get into a relationship again with a woman Mm -hmm. and you're not lovey dovey and all that stuff. They're just like, yo, like, do you even like me? You're not like, do you like, yo, not even love. Like you said, yeah. Like me, like, do you want to be here? Yeah. And I'm constantly, I was constantly, you know, in the woman I dealt with or whatever, having to defend myself, like, no, like, trust me, I don't like for my time and energy to be wasted. So if I'm here, I'm here for the long haul. Like, I'm not here, you know, for looks or, you know what I mean? Like, I just... Situation. Situation. Ooh, ooh, that's something else that we could talk about, too. Um, But yeah, I just, I feel like, too... Once you realize that you're a problem to an extent, mm-hmm. that can level up your relationship too. Ooh. Hey, accountability. Listen, because people 
on both ends, both men ends. and women, yes. if it's one thing they hate collectively, it's to take accountability for what they, the negative stuff they bring into a relationship. You got to be able to look in that mirror and deal with what you see. Mm -mm. That, I can't stand someone that they're the issue, don't want to accept it, and they're quick to point the finger back at you. Or something else I really hate, too, is you do something, they come down on you hard for it, mm -hmm. but then they turn right around and do the same thing, and it's like... Oh, okay, so it was an issue when I did it. It's different now. But now it's different and acceptable because you did it. What what makes it more acceptable? Is it specifically because it came from you opposed to me? It's I don't know. It's no, I, I feel you. I, I was in a situation and, well, coming off of the end of a situation, and it basically led me to a space of doing a lot of self-reflecting. I started back reading more, mm -hmm. and doing like a lot of self-improvement. Mm -hmm. And that was like one of the best things I could have done myself is like look in the mirror and be like, dang. Like, yeah, you've been a problem, and not just this is like a lot of Yo, situations. Yeah, and then being like, man, you gotta if you want, like, figure out what you want, and then if this is what you want, mm -hmm. this is the steps you gotta take to get there. Yeah, and you really gotta be like, man, I might be a little problematic, or I'm a little toxic, <laughs> or like I'm unemotionally available, or yeah. I'm just nonchalant and pick and choose what traits you find with living with. You yeah. look in the mirror and say, hey, this is me, then yeah. that's cool. Oh, that's a big fact. But if you can't, Ooh. you walk around like, nah, I'm the best. We all would think we're the best thing. Yeah. Let's, let's face it. Nine times out of ten. Yeah. But, I mean, you might not always be, but you got to yeah. own it. Yeah. And a lot of times we can't. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, toxic is a new, like, Waves, not it. Uh, you know what? Because it's fun until it's not anymore. That's I was funny. just about to say, can we talk about something that social media glorifies? Social media absolutely glorifies toxic traits. For instance, um, scenario. I feel like I feel like I can't remember. Maybe it was on Ti's podcast. I think he mentioned something along the lines of women don't typically go for the obvious good guy. Oh yeah, a guy that got his shit together, low key. Yeah got great characteristics that he could bring forth to a relationship. They'd rather go for the typical toxic ain't shit nigga yeah. because that's somebody that basically men that are most sought out attract females because they're looking like, what is it about this it's, guy? Yeah, they're trying to figure out what it is. Yeah, it's something that intrigues them and attracts them to this ain't shit type of nigga. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they always bypass the good guys. Yeah. But then when they get this ain't shit ass nigga, this be the crazy thing though. Is and you know, I feel like in all relationships, they start out in this puppy love phase, right? Yep. So it's like, oh boy, I love you, mama, mama, all that good stuff, right? right? And then in that within that span of time that you're in puppy love, I feel like oftentimes in relationships there are absolutely red flags. Oh. But because you're so in love, it's so puppy love phase, lovey dovey, those uh -huh. flags look like six, six flags. You having fun going up and down these hills. You you with all the bullshit. Oh, but after a while, you tired again on these same rides. You you want something different. Uh -huh. And, you know, something else I want to tack on to the end of this is the fact that a lot of women also, I feel like, go into relationships and look at guys as experiments. What I mean by that specifically is they see a guy like, hmm, I know the nigga ain't shit. But I think... I'm different. I think I can change them. They like zero for 10,000 at that. I think I can change a nigga. I think I can, you know, show him a different way of life. I can show him a different type of female that he not used to and da 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 da. And yeah. at the end of the day, if a nigga is not open to change, he's simply not, you can't make people change who they are. Uh, and not to say that person's not unique, but as a nigga, you've seen that before in some woman. It's nothing new. It's only so much a person can show you. As a nigga, you want to change, you gonna change, you wanna change. If right. I'm a person with females, like I know some females who dogs, like yeah. can we talk <laughs> about it? Move them in and move them out. And I don't even Listen. Like, the, the game is the game at the end of the day. Hey. And you gotta play it how it go. Like right. if you not she if you gotta dish it out, if you gotta you gotta be able to take it if you can dish it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So some of them they they look at dudes as experiments, like uh. Oh, he, he getting bread right now. He cool. Like, I'm just see what's up. He might fall in love with Shorty. And next hey. thing you know, she like, I, I don't like it here no more. Mm. 
she might do. Mm. And he attached now. So mm. it's like, ooh. Because, again, <laughs> something that women fail to realize is men do have emotions. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is another reason why a lot of women don't understand why they are able to put up with so much more shit from men. And will stay in a toxic relationship for years. Yeah. Whereas a guy, you do one bad thing, oh. especially if it's cheating. Oh my God. Most guys are going to hit the door immediately. Oh yeah, no that's that's about. like a deal breaker immediately. I'm out the door. <laughs> I mean, like fat. It's like, I don't, tip, I don't know too many men that if you ask them openly, open and honestly that if a woman were to cheat on them, they would stay. 99% of men are going to tell you, oh, no, my bad surpassed. That's just being a black man. you like, bro, my, my, like, my reputation's on the line. Yo. Take a girl back to cheese on you go out with your boys and see what happens. Hey, man. I'm you are getting dragged. That group chat right, is man, on fire. What? Look at this nigga. <laughs> nigga, is you stupid? you stupid? What? She going to do it again? <laughs> and don't come, don't come to us crying about it neither. Don't come to us. Because you, you's a sad. <laughs> Use the sap. You, at the same yo, you went all <laughs> kudos, all respect out the window, nah, and it's hard to come back from it. Because even it's kind of like I don't know. I feel like if you're the person that, because that for a guy, I feel like looks like you're letting your shorty walk all over you, yeah, and that makes you appear weak. Mm -hmm. So then it's hard to get that street cred back. Yeah, like if you, if you with your guys and say y'all get to argue and you try to raise your voice. <laughs> nah, you ain't raise your voice with her. Yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> big facts. She cheated on you. Nah, yo, you trying to get buff with me. Big facts. So yeah, bro. It's, nah, it's it's different. You know, women go through a lot. You know, they get cheated on. Some of them stay. You know, it's, it's yeah. just a. Uh, oh man, they got the short end of the stick with that one. They do. Um, and I mean, honestly, again, coming from a guy's point of view, the gene, the pool as far as like good good men out there, mm -hmm. it's like real slim like slim pickings yeah. absolutely and but again i feel like aside from men's upbringing it still has to do with social media too and what they glorify like oh, again like the toxicity and um especially like another pressure is men's body counts oh. and you know it's kind of like oh you're not you're not pulling at that's amount of women like yeah, what is wrong with you, you? yeah like what what is wrong with you what you got going on exactly and then especially something else among men too, especially when you get to a certain age or whatever, it's like, oh, you you not getting any yet. Yeah. You, you still a virgin. Like what? What? Like what? Yeah, what's God. what's that? I don't know what that conversation would, would be. It's, Yo. That, unless you be 25, 20, 25, 30 and you a virgin, bro. And she, then. Once she going to think you lying. Absolutely. And there's no way to prove that. So she's going to everything you lying. And absolutely. Then, it happens to go down. And then she like, oh, well, damn, he probably, he wasn't lying. <laughs> and then it's all another situation. Listen. But, sheesh, nah, you, you right, though. You right. I feel yeah. like, I feel like if, a, <laughs> if uh, women, if you're tuning into this, can you let me know how you would feel about if you met a guy that was like over the age of 25 and he told you that he was a virgin waiting for marriage? How would that strike you if you weren't a virgin yourself? <laughs> yeah. Well, please, please let us know because I'm interested in seeing. Very inter interested because I feel like I feel like I don't know because I feel like some women too though if they come across a guy and they feel like he well they determine that he's a virgin again women see men as projects yep. so they're looking like oh I could be your first oh yeah you gonna be here forever oh, yeah. for I'm gonna get you hooked mm. it's like it's like full circle or not really full circle but like. When guys meet women, you mm -hmm. know, like 19, 20, you meet a woman mm -hmm. or a young girl and she's a virgin. Mm -hmm. And you like, hmm, like, oh, I could be your first. Like, you, yeah. know, you don't know anything. So yeah. everything you know is what I'm going to show you. Yeah. Like, this could be fun. Yeah. And you go there and then a lot of times at that young age, she gets emotionally attached, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. And then a the guy, he's out here doing his thing, you know, sowing his oats. Mm -hmm. And then... She's attached, mm -hmm. heartbroken. She might act crazy, you mm -hmm. know, she's, and she's rightfully entitled yeah. to. But then, like you said, experiment. Yeah. So I think it. I think it plays its parts on both sides, but maybe different ages. Yeah, I feel like also piggybacking off of what you just said. I feel like women are more easily, especially at that vulnerable of an age, they're easily manipulated. Oh yeah, for sure. So it's it's. 
Mm, again, that toxicity, I meant toxic traits or whatever, right? That plays um, into it, especially coming from if the guy is older. Oh, yeah. Is, is, I don't even know how to really put that into words. Like older men would definitely, definitely manipulate a woman, but I don't want to negate the fact that women are just as manipulative too. Y'all out here scamming on your city girl shit. We peep you because we city boys. So don't, don't do that. <laughs> game recognize game. You thought you were scamming who? Oh, uh, okay. Again, pressures of a black male. You know what? Speaking of some city girl shit, do you remember? Months ago, where it was all this debate about a Birkin bag. Yeah, I do. Again, social, uh, something social media put out there that a lot of these women were putting pressures on men mm-hmm. saying that, oh, if you want to get with me, you got to shower me with these type of gifts. And regular, everyday people yeah. are not going to be able to afford these type of gifts. Not getting your Birkin, Mike. My- you're not getting the Birkin. A nail bag is more reasonable than a Birkin. And Hell, then, coach. coach. <laughs> my, my whole philosophy with that is if, if somebody was if somebody was to give you a Birkin bag, let's mm-hmm. say 30K on the light lamp, mm-hmm. what are you going to put in it? What, what are you pulling out of it? Can you actually repeat that? Say it louder for the for the people in the bag. <laughs> if someone was to give you with the Birkin bag, we can go on a light lamp. 20, we, I'll drop it down 25K. Mm-hmm. What are you going to put in it? What are you putting into this 25k what bag? You take out of it. And what are you checking your account before you type your card? I think you're ruffling What's, some feathers. I hope so, because this needs to be said. <laughs> it, it has to be talked about, man. I, you, because you have men out here who you say like everyday working men trying to grind, trying to make it. Everybody can't be a rapper, you know. No. Everybody can't do Birkin bags. Mm-hmm. You're grinding to get you something nice. You you want a Birkin bag for social media purposes. But as soon as you take that picture and post it, you have to live real life. What are you really taking out of the Birkin bag? Do you have a wallet? <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you have a wallet. Sorry, there. Do you have a wallet with your own money in your it? Money. That's that's the that's where you, let's start here. But, you can do a card holder, card holder, <laughs> wallet. You know what? And a card holder. Do you have a license? <laughs> Do you have a license, a credit card, yeah. some form, uh, something else that would make this empty bag <laughs> be worth some sort of value outside of the bag itself? Remove the bag. Where are the contents is what this young man is asking. You out here with an empty Birkin bag. Hollow. Just air. You got a Birkin, though. Got a Birkin, though. Showing up to the dinners with it on your shoulder. Yeah. You drop it, but it's hollow. When you drop it, ain't it's empty. Nothing is in there. No substance. Man, get you a tail fart. Shout out to black business. Let's yo. <laughs> hey. Get you a tail fart or something. Start start light. Start you know what? What is what is the phrase that we're basically being around the bush about? Is um stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. Hello. I think that's that's something that needs to be said again for the people in the back. I feel like again, the way social media is set up, you know, you want money and like all these things that you're able to get with money quick and fast as if again you're one of these celebrities out here but no you're you're a regular joe making 30 to 50k a year what are you doing with a bag that's worth your yearly salary i'm a little confusion and like i said i think it's the area we live in like social media if you really spend the majority of your day on social media and trying to like if you want materialistic purposes for the purpose of posting on social media yeah, we in some dark times. Yeah, absolutely, there's nowhere to, there's nowhere to go but down from there. Yeah, you like you look at if you're looking at Sweetie Page and she got six Birkins. Okay, she's also bringing in money probably from Instagram, right? And rapping and right. whatever else. Like she's getting money. Right, she's gonna attract a certain level of guys who can afford to do that. Right, you might not do that, and it's no shock to you. But don't try to put pressure on the man that you with who grinding. He might be saying up to get you a Louis V uh never full bag. Right. Fifteen hundred. Right. But you want to go over here and talk about a Birkin, so you're not even gonna get that now. Right. So now you stuck with whatever bag you might have. Basically, more of the story, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Stay in your tax bracket. Another How about that? You know. <laughs> <laughs> stay in your lane. Your lane is perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Because if your man break up with you and then you gotta find somebody else. Yeah, you guys find someone else that'll give you that Birkin. You might find a scammer. You might not. May not. Now you gotta buy your own bag. Hey, you, you know what? Speaking of buying your own bag, this is this is how I personally feel. I'm probably going to be scrutinized for this, but it's okay. I personally was raised that if you can't afford to buy certain shit yourself, don't ask for it. Yeah. Like, so if you want that Birkin, right? 
you, if you can't go out there and buy that yourself without having to depend on the man for that, don't ask for it. And it works vice versa too. Just like, you know, um, it's a lot of women out here nowadays that are buying their dudes cars. Again, finding this out through social media. Yeah. So I'm naturally assuming, or I'm not going to assume, I'm hoping yeah. that the men that they're, they're buying these cars for, I absolutely hope they can purchase them cars themselves. Yeah. And same thing again for the Birkin bags. Ladies, if you cannot afford your own Birkin, do not look at the guy to your right like, yeah, He's broke. I'm about to <laughs> yeah, squeeze like, this out this broke dude yeah. and go on to the next victim. Like, come on. <laughs> and also, I mean, this is probably not the topic for the day, but if, you, if you're into like, you know, not even fashion, but Birkins aren't really that easily accessible. You don't really just go into Hermes and say, I want a Birkin. You know, right. Usually they put orders in. But that's, that's different for another day. Uh, but for a woman who's asking for one, you know, um, I hope you know that. Because if you don't, that you probably don't need one. No, it's probably some some women out here in our tax bracket. Hey, babe, give me a Birkin. <laughs> you trying to go to the mall to get me a Birkin? To, oh, that's crazy. I don't think you nah, can get that from... Don't sell those. Nah, um, I don't think so. But, yeah, like I said, that's another pressure, man. Like, that... You know, not gonna say all women, but in the times we're living in today's times, like you said, keeping up with the Joneses, mm-hmm. they feel men are pressured to have their girl. They don't like you don't want your girl to step out looking like busted or nothing, right? So that pressure is then transferred to like, dang, like I do want her to look good, like she's mm-hmm. like an image of me, mm-hmm. but she want a Birkin, and mm-hmm. I know I can't afford it, right? I really can't afford a Louis V, she right? Any of that, but. I don't want her to leave me, so let me do what I can. Yeah. Like, run this credit card. Bitch. I was just about to say, niggas will put themselves in debt. Took a loan out for a Louis V bag. Fellas, please do not take no loan please. out. <laughs> like, at the end of the day, if you're going to take a loan out, do not let it be for a bad That's Fashion comes and goes. Like, it's in and out of season. Right. Like, if I'm spending, if I'm going to put myself self in debt for like 25, 30K, that's a car. Like a high end vehicle, if anything, that's what I'm putting my money into. I'm not buying this Birkin bag that is gonna hold its value for this length of time, mm-hmm. and then next thing you know, a, a designer drops the latest whatever, and you're moving on to the next thing. Social media is moving on. Yep. You stuck with this bag. You went and bought this Birkin. You pressured your man into buying you. You know whatever. You know me realistic. You pressured this man into buying you a five K Louis V. All right, they dropped the spring, it's 2021, spring 2022 collection. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, that bag is no more in stock. No more. You're still stuck with it, but now everybody, some people on social media have the newest. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can't trade a Louis bag in. No. You might sell it, but you can't <laughs> trade it. Anyway, either way, you're going to lose money. <laughs> right. Now you back in your uh, bay, and you're like, what, what do you want now, bro? <laughs> I want another bag. Y'all right. Got you, like, right. Yeah, bro. Fellas, do not fall into that pressure. Mm. If you can afford it, treat your lady with, with whatever's in your means. Mm-hmm. But don't fall into the pressure of trying to keep up with social media. Right. Because social media is never going to stop. Right. Um, Dang. I'm going to go back for a bit, right? With the... Dang. It was something I meant to touch on when it comes to the emotional side, right? Okay. So we tackled it from the standpoint of uh, women often feel like a lot of men... um could be like too nonchalant yeah. or not very sensitive, not very like lovey dovey type or whatever. Mm-hmm. I wonder how women would feel about being with a man that's almost like too sensitive or like too emotional and too lovey dovey, like the complete opposite. Yeah. I've I've been on different sides of the spectrum. You know, you know how people say they get their heart broke young and they turn them into a dog. Yeah. yeah that's my story. Like I used to be the like grade school days, like overly like just really like want love. Like yeah. you're looking back, you too young for all of that. Listen. So like you're that person and women women want it from who they want it from, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. And when they want it. Mm-hmm. You can't open a door and be too emotionally like too lovey dovey because it's it stops the chase. Yeah. There's nothing to want from cool. that. You know, it's like once you learn everything about somebody, they no longer become like unique. Yeah. So it's like I think stuff happens in doses. I think that's why when you go into talking to someone or getting to know them, like it's within stages. Like mm-hmm. you have to take your time with it. Because if you show your all your cards up front, it's nothing to learn. Mm-hmm. And then that shortens the time. Yeah. Y'all might, you know, last. Yeah. 
Ooh. <laughs> First off, you said something that low-key triggered me, but I'm not going to tell too much of my business. I'm going <laughs> to shut up. But, uh, yeah, because I always wonder, again, when I'm in those situations where it's like, yo, you're too nonchalant, da 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 and I feel like I'm doing enough to show that I care, it's kind of just like, well... For one, I don't even know how to be more emotional, yeah. especially like I feel like it's harder. Something else going back to something else I touched on, too, was women trying to change men. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's harder for people to change because um, especially when age comes into play, okay. if you get to a certain age again, I feel like it's hard for anybody to change the way they move and maneuver through life once you pass the age of like 25 because you're kind of set in your ways at that point but i feel like if the right person comes along i feel like change doesn't have to be forced i feel like it's something that you'll naturally submit to so, from yeah. both from both sides right I agree. and um yeah so i just i don't know the emotional stuff i don't know and again maybe this is a pressure from society i feel yeah. like men are taught to be like macho you know what i mean and with being macho and masculine you got to cut out the emotion the sensitivity and all the stuff like that because to the point that you brought up earlier women will see that and be like oh i can walk over this dude i can get him to do whatever i want i can get him to buy that birkin bag and put him in debt and then leave him him. (laughs) exactly i'm gonna scam him i'm gonna get get the bread uh, so not only am I going to cop the Birkin bag, if you get a real finesser, like a lot of women are, I'm going to finesse this one out this bag and finesse uh-huh. this one out the cash. So now yeah. that bag won't be empty no more. Exactly. Now I'm going I'm to fill it, it up. Hey, hey. She's going to pop out and she's going to be in somebody's section. Because hey. it's all about a section to do what? Put it on Instagram. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, yo, it- <laughs> I feel like I feel like my guy here has been triggered. Hey, man, listen, ah, man, it's, it's it's a difficult conversation, but at the same time, like like you said, I think it goes back to what I said earlier. As far as you have to be strong and vulnerable, but not soft, and it's easier said than done. Like I think it takes some maneuvering to find out that way. Mm-hmm. Just the same way. Like when we're not we're not killing y'all, we're not burying y'all. By the way, just like mm-hmm. women are, all, black women always have to seen as being strong. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if y'all are vulnerable, then you're too soft. Yeah, you have to always be a strong black woman. It's the same way pressure as a black man. We have to be strong. And sometimes it's just, sometimes it's just in you. Sometimes it's a result of your upbringing, mm-hmm. what you go through. Mm-hmm. Who knows? And then sometimes it's just not even that. But just because a man doesn't walk around like that doesn't mean. He's soft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That just might be how he is. Every man in the world can't be. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Something that you said low-key triggered me. (laughs) Talk about it. And so you basically, what I got from part of what you just said is the fact that I personally feel like men and women want the same thing, Mm -hmm. just in different ways. Oh, yeah. Like men and women, I feel like commonly, like they want the happiness, they want the love, the affection, like all that good stuff, right? But the ways that men want those things from women is different than the way that women will want those things from men, which plays into the, again, like for a guy, it's like, okay, I want these things. This is the way I want it from a woman. So I'm, I may present it to her the same way that I think I would want it for myself. Mm-hmm. And that's why I feel like a lot of women are like, no, that's yeah. not really what I had in mind. You got an example for that? Mm-hmm. Just just elaborate to it. Oh, just so they can see where you coming from. Oh, so <laughs> dang, I really don't. You know, I'm out of touch with the relationship stuff. Ain't been in one in a minute, uh, and it's a pandemic. <laughs> wow, but uh, but dang, what's an example I could give? Uh, let's think about. Uh, let's go to the love, the quality time. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Maybe. So, for instance, this isn't necessarily me per se. I'm also taking in from like other experiences because I also can put my uh, self in other people's shoes. Mm -hmm. So I know guys that will define quality time as specifically that just spending time with their significant other right Mm -hmm. it doesn't even necessarily have to be doing much of anything it could be something in the house but there are some women out there that's fine with but some are like no to spend quality time with me you need to take me out like i want to be seen i want to be seen in public Mm -hmm. you parade me around show me off like i'm your trophy dressed up yeah yeah like i want i want you know that is what they define as quality time. But again, I feel like a lot of that can be uh, resolved 
um, just by communicating more. Yeah. Like as you're learning and growing with each other, you should know what things to bring to the table yeah. that will satisfy your partner. Yeah. And again, I feel like, again, due, due to the lack of communication in our generation, I feel like that's a lot of reasons why like things can get so toxic so quick because people just aren't taking the time to get to know these people just about to say get to know these people that they're hooking up with Mm -hmm. they pressured to like all right this is who i want i'm trying to lock this down as soon as possible because it's wicked out here and right dude on instagram come across her page hey i might lose my like let me just kind of rush this so communicating goes out there yeah we're going on dates you might not be talking about anything at the table but yo what's the plate you know what i'm saying yeah she got what she wanted, and then here we are. We don't know anything about each other. Yeah, we could talk about and like you said, simple conversation could clear that up. Like, oh, like what's your what's your love language? Mm-hmm. And even if she doesn't know, all right, cool. She does, you might be putting her on to something. Yeah. Oh, take the quiz online. Read the book. Yeah. Let's read it together. Yeah. Oh yeah, this these are yours. Quality of time. What's quality of time to you? Yeah. Talk about it. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Now we're on the same page. So yeah. Ask me to come over. Yeah. I know what I'm getting into. I don't think yeah. he's about to sit here and watch TV. Like, Netflix she and wants chill. To go out. Exactly. She wants to go out. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I know how to move with that. But say you don't know, you come over there thinking you about to chill. She's like, oh no, why you got sweats on? Yo, you I thought. thought it was going out. Yeah. I thought we was doing. Yeah. And then he might be the guy like, he petty. Like, I've been petty. Like, oh, well, what's wrong with this? <laughs> I feel like, I, I feel like a lot of people. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of something else that social media glorifies, being petty is absolutely something that I feel like social media stops. glorifies. It, it will not stop. It, it doesn't stop. I, I don't know. I just don't have energy for certain stuff, man. Like, I don't. If you get me to a point where I have to go out my way to do something so out of character, that's a dead giveaway. That's actually a red flag for me to let me know this is no longer six flags. I'm not having a good time on this emotional roller coaster with you. I got to. I got to get off this. I got to get off. Sometimes I find I find time to be petty though. <laughs> you catch me on the right day. I'll find some time to be petty. Just a little bit. Again, I feel like for me, if I have to go out my way to find the time yeah. to be petty, I'm absolute. When I say I'm going to be so petty, oh, yeah. gonna be I'm going to hit you with some shit that you're going to be like, I had no idea you were capable. You, you want petty? Right. You were looking for a good time? All right. I may not be here for a long time, but for time. this period of time here, I'm going to have a blast being petty. You're going to hate it here. Uh, I'm going to hate it for you. You won't be petty no more. Listen, but I hate, honestly, all jokes aside, I really hate if you got to do that, though. Yeah. Because it's like, why? I don't, like, even after I break up with people or whatever and we go our separate ways, I honestly wish the best for them. And I know that a lot of people are like, hell no. What did uh, Quavo say on Twitter yesterday? (laughs) (laughs) I was really trying not to bring up Quavo and Sweetie. What he said, take care? I always said, I wish you the best. You're not the woman I thought you were. I wish you the best. That and then wasn't it her that came back and said, "Take care." Yeah, Pressure of a black man. People automatically assume we get wrong, and we don't never know. I don't really give a fuck to be honest with you, but I mean, we'll, we'll never know. But you know what? But I'm Pressure of a black man. He felt like he had to come on on Twitter and clear and his defend name. his defend his character, which defend honestly, in my opinion, business. didn't really help him much, nah, but man. probably made it's it worse. It's never, bro, it's never to go to. I honestly feel like another pressure of a black man. When you try to defend your character, like it's it's like World War Three, but women can got, defend their character. Especially when she got the cheering section. Uh, that's that's the friends in the group chat, by the way. The cheering. You section. know what? Chat. Can we talk that's about it? Fuck that nigga. Fuck that's, that nigga. That's, that's you don't need that nigga, girl. You don't need him, sis. All the time. She gonna call you. Let's back. go out. She gonna call you back, bro. She's bro. Text and tell you outside. <laughs> But you know, I, you know what? I'm not. Like I'm not about said, to get into this. That's another pressure yeah. too. Feeling like you have to clear your name because you have to clear your name. Yeah. This is your personality. This is who you have as a black man. You got your. You, you really have your word. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, as men, we do fuck that up. Um, because <laughs> we be doing bullshit out here. Yeah. But at the same time, like I said, I feel like you go through phases. Uh, I remember Jay Z's four 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 song. Only I know y'all know what he was talking about in that. Uh, one line he said that Ruffle Feathers was, he's talking to Beyonce, and he said, uh, you matured faster than me, I wasn't ready. Um, and I, that was crazy, because yeah. women were like, you know, he should have left her alone, and mm-hmm. let her be on her business. And I, and I understand that side too, but he wanted it. Mm-hmm. And he can't, while you can help your level of maturity to a degree, 
it takes a process. Mm-hmm. It might be a month. It might be years. Mm-hmm. Beyonce, so like, she might have chose to stay with Jay. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's two sides to it. Mm-hmm. So I think, like I said, um, his accountability in that, that was around the same time when I was going through my self-improvement, self-reflection. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, like, you kind of got really happy. Jay-Z can look at himself and be like, um, if y'all get a chance, my, this is a side note. Um, he has a four, four, four footnotes where he talk. It's just him and guys talking. Um, mm-hmm. I forgot. I can't think of uh, James St. Patrick's name. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it's just uh, Chris Paul is in there. Uh, just a lot of different black uh, famous men, mm-hmm. and they're just talking about like you know their scenarios as far as pressures of being a black man and being in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. And people go through real stuff. Yeah. Um, but that's like that's not the pressure of feeling like you have to be. Squeaky clean. Mm-hmm. Everybody not gonna be LeBron. You know no. what I'm saying? LeBron, 18 years, no scandals, no nothing. Yeah. Everybody's not gonna be LeBron. You yeah. Know, real life stuff. Yeah. And I think sometimes black men are pressured to just be at a level where we're gonna make mistakes too. Yeah. We're not allowed to make mistakes is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. And if you do, you get crucified for it. Yeah. So. Uh something this is probably gonna ruffle uh actually my fellas' feathers, sorry. So Something that, again, I say this time and time again, I'm a real logical thinker, right? And being a logical thinker, I oftentimes feel like not all situations, this is only depending on what the actual situation is or whatever, right? I feel like a lot of times people cause their own issues in the sense of they put themselves in situations they shouldn't have been in in the first place, where like, you know, say for the guys night, this is... Honestly, why I feel like a lot of women don't like a lot of their dudes, homeboys that they hang with. Mm -hmm. Because it's like every time you're with so-and-so, I can see you doing some crazy shit with them. (laughs) You know what I mean? And it's just like, had you not taken your ass over there like I told you not to, Uh X, Y, and Z would not have taken place And you would have not had to come home and deal with this wrath that you're having to put up with because of this dumbass mistake that you put up with. But be clear. Guys are prone to doing that, but women absolutely do the same shit. Hell yeah. Like, make it, to be very clear, if you're entertaining some shit that you know, you, hey, you know what? I'm going to cut myself back a little bit because this goes to cheating. Yeah. So for me, I feel like cheating is um, if you're doing some shit behind your significant other's back in secret that if it was to ever come back out, you know that person would feel a type of way about. Yeah. You should and you know deep down you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Why are you doing it? Yeah. And then you have the nerve to sit here and be like, you know, feeling the way that they, they felt the way about it. Yeah. Like, dude, you allow, you put yourself in that situation, you let temptation get the best of you. Yeah. But again, another pressure of a black man. When it's being thrown to you, you're gonna be let that sideways if you don't catch it. Oh yeah, for sure. So, like, bro, you 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 turn that down, like, like, bro, I wouldn't have said nothing, like, bro. What? It couldn't have been me. Yeah. I mean, I I, I probably talked that shit too. Yeah, I definitely talked that shit. Too. You but, know what? It might have been the tequila or the Hennessy. It talking. was absolutely the tequila <laughs> for me. <laughs> I was to keep talking, but that's, he's still a grown ass man in the, the day. Bro. Listen, he told me shut up. Absolutely. You're a grown ass man capable of making your own decisions. Yeah, I just want to talk my shit, bro. End of the day, you got to live with your decision. Don't let me bully you. Like, Yo, I was about to say the petty part of me is, oh, wow, you actually did that? <laughs> right. Yikes. I didn't. Yeah, I was just talking shit. Yo. Right, Yo. Do you wild, bro. You wildin'. Wow. Like, your shorty's going to definitely leave you for this, my guy. Yikes. I'm going to pray for y'all. Sleep, bro. I'm going to go to sleep. Yo. Uh,. <laughs> It's gonna be tough out here the next couple of days. Yo. <laughs> Text him the next day, like, bro, you good? Yo. Nah, bro. I, mm, I messed up. Get my line if you need me. Mm, you're gonna be on the couch at the crib, is what you're telling me. Uh, okay. It's gonna be a long night. Boy. Long night. Ooh. But we dissected it quite a bit. We did, man. Like I said, it's pressures of being a And I'm glad we were talking about it here, whether it reaches the masses or at least. Right. Place, just to be like, dang, you know. Men actually do face pressures. We ain't even get into actual society of walking out, walking into spaces as a black man. I mean, I have nothing but time. Talk about it. So, you know, it's so crazy. I feel like we've only been dwelling on social media mm-hmm. because, like, 
the way that social media is set up, something's always like a new topic. It's yeah. always, you know, consistently moving forward with some trending topic of some sort. But I feel like society is where a lot of our issues are actually it started from, right? Mm-hmm. So specifically, we can talk about black men being looked at as like criminals mm-hmm. and like, um, you know, being basically stereotyped for certain things or whatever and you don't even relate to those things that they're trying to stereotype you for right, right and so you're having to deal with these pressures deal with um what's another stereotype that uh society likes to put on us um i feel like in the workplace i was um, yes workplace is one being portrayed as lazy uh, i feel like that's really for women too though i yeah. feel like black people oh, in general yeah. from a workplace i tell people bruh i'm actually triggered because i literally just had a conversation with a co-worker and mine was like i'm tired of not just i feel like white people get a pass when they just do their job yeah they can do the hell out their job and get a promotion just by doing what is spelled out within their job description yep. but niggas oh nah you your job description says abc but they expect you to do def and then if you want to get promoted you need to go beyond that so it's just like dude like how is but you want to consider everyone as being equal Mm -hmm. how still not equal 2021 still not equal still still not equal in 2021 you raised this talk to be you got to be twice as good and then so what do you do when that doesn't cut it where do, you, where do you go from there? You at work, you busting your Trigger. ass, you doing everything you got to do. The, the job description said, these are my, these are my, what I have to do on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. You talk to your uh, manager, oh, what I got to do to get promoted? You got to do this list of things right here. Mm-hmm. You do that list, uh, still not enough. And that actually happened to a coworker of mine. That's um, happened to me, and, shit. <laughs> and he did everything that was on the list and it was like, oh, like, wow, he actually did it. Right. Still got to do more. Not enough. No, and it's never like, enough. Well, where do I go from from here? Yeah, like, and then I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. That that that's a whole different, yeah. The workplace, society, like you said, the way as a black man, the way you dress, the way you're dressing, and where you're going, mm-hmm. you have to be aware. Yeah, like if you're going into a restaurant, you have to be aware of how you're dressed, because, mm-hmm. so you don't look that as. Like with like he's not supposed to be here. Type mm-hmm. thing. Even in twenty twenty one. Yep. You go into uh, a store. You had a hoodie on. Mm-hmm. Like I was doing this a couple. I wasn't. I didn't even know I was with some. Like man, why you take your hood off? It was just literally a reaction. Yeah. And now we have to wear masks now. Mm-hmm. Bro, I'm not like I have to wear yeah. a mask and a hood on. Bro, I'm taking this hood off. Bro. Yeah. I just don't. I feel like I don't even want to deal with no bullshit. Yeah. And you probably run the store like I'm still and we might have a bigger problem. Yeah. So I just try to like. You know, you just try to avoid shit and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. And then basically to piggyback off of what you just said, it's also that stereotype of uh being in like a hot end store, being mm-hmm. followed around oh, yeah. and being looked that like, you know what? I'll give you guys a real life example. So back for my birthday, when I went to get my truck, right? Mm-hmm. I went to the Mercedes dealership. Nobody ever came and talked to me. Mm-hmm. Me and my parents looked at three cars in the lot. And, like, again, I feel like we're so, like, kind of, like, we normalize, like, being treated so shitty that, like, I wasn't even looking for no one to come up to me. I knew I was going to have to go seek the help if I wanted it. So, like, I looked at, like, three vehicles, and my parents just got pissed out of nowhere because I took them with me. They was like, get back in the car. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? We get in the car. They was like, fuck these. Uh, Fuck these people. Like, how we out here trying to buy a vehicle all these white people are out here looking at cars and the moment these bitches are stepping out their vehicles they're being assisted we've been out here five minutes looking at cars not even a greeting like a hello let me know if you need assistance i went to the dealership i got my car from a black person that worked there greeted me the second i stepped out the car and of course that's where i got the car from money yeah for sure so something else going from this i feel like black people that's another reason to stop buying bats like buying these high-end clothes and bats and shit because at the end of the day they're taking your money but they're still treating you less than exactly like so you might as well support your black businesses Mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying and money where it's appreciated right where it's appreciated because these white people like "Mm, y'all come a dime a dozen and they were so crazy not even get too deep 
these big brands, if you if you look, you got rappers, entertainers who can afford it. They're buying it, mm-hmm. whatever, and you're buying it off of them mm-hmm. and putting money in those pockets. But then when you go into the stores and mm-hmm. you're not that entertainer, you're not spending mm-hmm. the money they're spending. You might not get a sit. Mm-hmm. They might walk in. They might get champagne when they shop. Mm-hmm. You might walk in and get a a stare. Are you lost? Are you? Yeah, can I? <laughs> I don't want to say can I help with anything, but like, can I help you right. with anything? Right. And then like, like yeah, like you said, you just go in there and you get different stairs and it's like, mm-hmm. nah, bro. Awkward right when you step in. Yeah, like I'm straight. Or like you're just being there walking around by yourself and you'll never get asked. Right. Any, any help. Right. So, yeah, bro. I, I don't know. But to go off of what you just said too, there's even been people on social media mm-hmm. That are known celebrities, but they may go to a country, to a store where they're not, you know, uh, a lot of people may not know of them in that particular country. They go in there with legit cash, ready to drop for certain stuff. And then the people in there look stupid because now the black person had to turn into the typical angry black man or woman and been like, y'all in here disrespecting me. And I was going to drop this whole bag on y'all. But now I'm about to take this bread and go elsewhere. You played yourself. Exactly. You, you I, my my mentality is you never know what people like have or whatever. Because exactly. some of the people with the most money, they dress the most basic. They're not into all that shit. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So that's why it doesn't matter what someone look like when they come into certain establishments. You should treat everybody the same. Ooh. But again, the way that society is built up, nah, yeah. mm, black dude hoodie. Mm. You just you just triggered me with that too because I look man. We in the wave now. You know, we get into a, a different age bracket and, you know, designer is big now. Mm-hmm. Going off of social media. Yeah. Black men, <laughs> do not feel pressured to feel like you have to be designer down to get a woman's attention. No. I feel like, like I said, keeping up with the Joneses. You are no. wasting money. Yeah. That $500 Gucci shirt is not worth it. Now, if you got it, bro, <laughs> you can afford it. You can do that. Then do you, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's what you really like, then do you. But don't feel pressure that you have to do that because a white tee can still get the job done. <laughs> a white tee can still get the job done. I almost done. got up and left. <laughs> white tee, two gold chains, yo. You still in there, bro. Get you some Nike sweats or shorts or whatever you should. Yo. In. Don't feel pressured to feel like you have to be designer down to let people know that you can afford it. Because again, like I know I kind of went on on the women earlier with the Birkin bag. Fellas. Do not be Dior down, Louis down, Burberry, <laughs> Fendi, McQueen, whatever, and then your woman wants something, and then you can't something reasonable with that, or you yeah. can't out to eat, yeah. or you can't like day to day. You don't have a car. Don't don't be that guy, bro. Yo, first off, I don't mean to cut you off, my guys. Y'all better not be out here with all this designer stuff and not even have a means of transportation. Please have your priorities in order. You know what? Can we uh, speaking of that though? That goes back into upbringing, too. Yeah. I feel like if you weren't taught, like, I feel like it's okay to, you know, not experience certain things and, like, um, not have money when you're younger. But I feel like a lot of these people, when they get older and start seeing money, they mm-hmm. were never taught what to do with it once they got it. Oh. So they start putting themselves in debt, blowing money fast, Mm -hmm. again, trying to keep up with the Joneses or just, even if it's stuff that they genuinely uh, like, just like and want to have, they don't realize that it's okay to treat yourself every once in a while, but money runs out eventually. Know how to budget. Let's start there. Like a lot of people, I feel like this is actually a cultural issue though. I feel like a lot of people in our culture, they don't have people to sit them down to show them how to budget. Right. So it'll set a good uh, financial foundation down for them to grow from. Exactly. You know, and that goes into what you're saying about all these people. And I, I would say all black people, because I feel like black people will support, you know, the high-end cars, the luxury clothes and all this stuff, and then go back home to, like, nothing, yeah. essentially. But you look like money, like money when you out here roaming the streets, but if someone was to follow you home and see how you living, it's like, like oh, bro. bro, like, you're walking, like... You living over here, bro? Like, you perpetrating, like... Big perp. Like, what is you doing? And that's why I'm like, and I don't know, maybe it's just me, but anybody I consider a friend, that's a guy, like, bro, should I get these? Hell no, you shouldn't get them. Bro, nah, that's not a reasonable I'm that purchase. friend. That's not a reasonable purchase. But I'm going to tell you, like, straight up. And now, if you decide to buy it, that's on you. I'm, when you go out, I'm not going to tell people he ain't got it. Yeah. But I'm like, bro, I don't think you should make that purchase. Because I feel like you're doing it for the wrong reason. And you may, you may not even have it. 
Like I said, bro, don't. Yeah, people might see, oh, he got a Gucci shirt on. Five, oh, I know it's 500. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, when you leave the club, whatever, after Instagram picture, bro, your pocket still got to be straight. You can't buy a tax, you shouldn't buy it. You just triggered me yet again. <laughs> Because something else, this is keeping up with the Joneses, right? Mm-hmm. You never know how people got to where they are or okay. were able to obtain what they have. Exactly. For instance, there could be, like, I'm going to just uh, throw out my family out there, right? Time and time again, my parents uh, always go through this. When people come to the crib and see how my parents are living, they just like, oh, y'all got money. Y'all got money. No, my parents have connects. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff they got, they got for crazy deals. Yeah. But if you look at it, them like, oh, they got to have bread yeah. to live this sort of way or to have this or whatever. And also, a lot of stuff is also based on your credit, which, again, goes back to needing to know how to budget and finance. Knowing money. So uh, understanding how money works, right? So it's like if you have those key people in place to teach you, you know, those sorts of life lessons to establish like a solid foundation to build from, without that foundation, no matter what you build off of it, it's going to fall. It's going to collapse every time. That's a big fact. Listen, we... Big we already fact. been talking for over an hour. That's a big fact. Clearly, we can make this a part two if necessary because clearly I feel like Again, I just know, like, just going through life and experiencing the type of people that I come across or whatever, like, it just sounds like a lot of black people tend to be behind the curve because they just don't want to drop gems yeah. to help out the next person. The Even, place. yeah, that crabs in the um, barrel mentality that where I feel like for the most part, majority of us, I would hope, are stemming away from that. Yeah. But the few that are, y'all some sick people, bro. Yeah. Check your circle, man. Check your circle. You got people out here that they know you might not be good with money and they're not trying to help you out. That's a red flag. Red you're flag. You're money. You're not trying to help all the people around you. That's a red flag. There's enough money to go around for everybody, man. I also know. feel like, not to cut you off, mm-hmm. black people, men, you know what? I feel like this is more so men than women. I feel like something else that is an issue amongst us men is a sense of pride. Yeah. Men are afraid to ask for help oh. when they need help. Hey. And that goes back to what you were saying. So, if you see somebody in your circle mm-hmm. moving a certain way and able to like you know like they're maneuvering through life like it they're doing it to the point that it looks easy yeah meanwhile you're going through hardship after hardship why are you not tapping into that person like yo like from me to you like um i see the way you move and da, 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 da. how are you able to get from here to there because i've seen your growth I, i'm trying to i'm trying to get on that wave but a lot of dudes just like, damn, they end up becoming jealous yeah. instead of just asking for that knowledge or whatever. Because I think a lot of it's taught to get it out the mud. Like, it's glorified more when you when you do it yourself. But you know what? Yes, but I feel like getting it out the mud doesn't mean you can't ask for help. Oh, I don't, I don't agree with it. I don't want my kids to get anything out the mud. <laughs> I don't like his anything out the money, bro. I, I mean, I believe in the value of hard work. Yeah. Like, I'm not just, I don't believe in handouts, yeah. but I do believe in hard work. And um, I feel like even with the success that I have, my parents, like, granted, they didn't have the finances to just, like, set me up, right? But what they did give me was certain lessons yeah. to be like, look, this is the foundation you need to be successful. Mm-hmm. You can either take this or you can leave this. Right. But you, but can't, say you can't say I did not tell you. Yeah. That is one of the things that, like, and being that I was raised that way, again, something unempathetic about me is when I see people living in their own struggles they created, Mm -hmm. and you got people in your circle that can assist you, and you're not you're not taking advantage of that um that knowledge. So you want to struggle? You want to struggle? Just say that. You cool with it? You cool with it? So I'm cool. If you like it, I love it. Mm. Because you got you got to be able to ask for help. You got to be able to like. Especially with someone you call a friend. If I can't talk to you man to man or man, then I call you a friend. Then are we really friends? No, we we're associates. We cool people, associates, like you said. Nah, bro, you got to like you said. As a man, man, I know it's easier said than done. We all felt that pressure. It's great to ask for help, not handouts. Ask hey, for yes, if a handouts and they tell you hell no, then uh, you on your own. But help is again. Problem. That sense of pride for me. What do you look like asking for a handout, yeah. bro? Like, bro, you asked for it. Bro, what? 
And then the pressure would be like, bro, you asked for help? You couldn't figure it out yourself? Yo. Mm. Well, your woman might tell you that. You asked for help? Like you asked another man for help? What type of man is you? Or you couldn't put it together? You couldn't put this together? You need a direction? You need instructions? <laughs> Man, you just, just gonna get on Twitter. Yo. Y'all, my man, read the instructions to put together this uh, dresser. <laughs> you know what? Get me out of here. You know what? I'm just playing ladies. I'm just playing. Did, I, I, kind of, kind of ass, I was about to say playing, but not really. Kind of dead ass. Pretty serious. Because ask for help when y'all need it. Yeah. Because if she, I mean, if you struggle, you can get talked about. So you might as well ask for help. I mean, you're going to be talked about regardless is the point. Regardless. You don't be the I'd rather be the guy that got the assistance and reached the goal I was trying to achieve than yeah. the guy that suffered that didn't achieve shit. He down bad. He should then they're gonna be like, he should have asked for help. He should have <laughs> asked for <laughs> Yup. What's wrong with that? It's dumb ass. He should have asked for help. Trying to be tough. Trying to be tough. Trying to be know it all. I can't win. Yo. But you know what? Again, we've been talking for well over an hour. This ended up being we unfolded some things. Unfolded a lot. There was a lot to unpack here. People gonna be asking for part two. Yeah, and we we can absolutely give you that part two. But would you be ready for it? Yeah, we need to let y'all let us know. Because I feel like the only people that will have problems with this episode is is people that's not willing to accept facts. Like, yeah, like that's not me. That's not me. The person beside you, like. Eh. And again, going back to what we're talking about, oh, you don't believe you're toxic, huh? You don't think that's... Okay. You don't, you don't see that you're the problem. You don't see you, don't see you are the problem. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Ask 10 of your friends. A- ask three. Oh, you don't have 10 friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Devontae, ask now... The ask the ones you do have. Now, and when all I... All of them say you're not toxic, they're lying. Now, when I asked you to be on this podcast, I did not expect you to speak any kind of way. I came with the bullshit. You absolutely... I'm going to blame Duce. I think it's the Duce. It's absolutely the Duce. Because I put a little more... I put two splashes of Coke in mine, and I put half a splash in yours. And your half a splash... It's the Duce talk. That's, that's absolutely what it is. Brown ain't never lied, though. No. <laughs> you know what? The Brown has never lied. I'm going to go ahead and put the Brown down. And we're going to go ahead and close out this episode. Um, but before I close out this episode, of course, I got to thank my guy, Devonte. No and then something else I actually want to shout out to. If you fucking with the intro, this guy here. Hit me. Hit him. His info would definitely be in the, uh, in the description. If you fucking with the photos. Yeah, that's me too. My guy. Hit me for your photography and videography needs. Hey, camera skills are on 10. This is what I mean by I, I really like the fact that, you know, it's unfortunate that we're going through a pandemic. But what I love about our group in general, there are so many people that took this opportunity to level the fuck up. Man, got in there guffy. They was just like, you know what? There's a bag out there to get it this yeah. time. Yeah. And I'm going to go grab it. And we all was like, you know what? Sometimes like take some time to rest if you need to. But if not, get on your shit. Come out of this pandemic and say you did some shit. If you went the whole year, because we've been in the pandemic for a year. If you went this whole year and you don't have shit to show what you did in this pandemic, Bro, you're not doing something right. You Look at your circle. Yeah. Your circle is not holding you accountable because you shouldn't be part of it. Unless you were one of the few people who were greatly affected by the pandemic and lost your job or something to have bigger problems. Then okay, but other than we that, suck a nerve with my puppy. Do y'all hear him? <laughs> other than that, you should have been on your shit grinding. If you was a business you wanted to start, done should have done that shit. Still have time to do that shit. And like you said, your circle should be iron sharp as iron. They should have been on your ass. Like bro, I thought you were trying to start. Give you a week or two, two weeks, bro. Can I get an update? Like what you got going on? I'm on your ass, bro. Because you said on you it. Do it. Let's, let's make it happen. So yeah. Mm. Shout out to real friends. Hey, shout out to you, the real ones. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and close out this episode. I hope y'all fuck with it. Uh, drop some comments down in the comment section. Duke it out if necessary, but keep it respectful because we big on respect around here. But um, yeah, and if you really would like a part two, hit us up in the comments again. DM us. Let us know what you trying to, what you fuck with, what you don't. We here. We we like to engage with you guys. So hey. Go crazy. But anyway, till next week. Deuces. Thank you for tuning in to sit on this with a Paris. About to get lit with these topics.
trap your thoughts in the comments Thanks for the love, ain't got time for you to make comments Subscribe without further ado, I bring to you this for you